Hello everybody and welcome to the second tutorial in the Selenium web driver tutorial series. Now in this video what we're going to be doing is talking about how to actually access elements on the page. So before you saw that we did things like print out the title, we can access techwithtim.net, we can quit, but that's as far as we went. So what I want to show you now actually is an example on my website, I'll bring it up here, I do have the Selenium documentation for our reference. So on my website I have a search bar. Uh, and what I want to do is access this search bar, search for something, and then actually be able to grab all of the search results and have that in our Python code. So that's going to be our challenge for this video. That's going to teach us a lot about how to access different elements and how to nest inside of kind of different divs and things like that. But I need to start by giving you a very brief overview of HTML code and how we access elements in HTML. So actually, let me go back to this. So when you're on a website, in Google Chrome at least, if you want to look at the HTML or the page source, what you can do is click on any element that you'd like to look at, right click and hit inspect element. Here you'll see I have this zoomed in on my screen so you can see it better, but it shows me the HTML that was used to define that element. Now this is important because when we access elements, we need to access them by a few different properties or one of a few different properties. So we have an ID, we have a class, we have a name, we have the tag. There's a bunch of different ways to access the elements, but the most common ways are going to be ID, name, and class name. Now, if you look here, we can see that the input here has a class, it has a name, but it does not have an ID. So that means we need to find some way to access this input tag by using what's defined inside of here. So most likely we'll use a name but kind of the general hierarchy and what we want to use is ID first, because an ID in HTML is guaranteed to be unique. Then secondly, if there is no ID, we probably can go with something like name. Name is not necessarily unique, but it usually is on the page. Then in worst situation, we can use something like class. Now class name is okay to search by, but the issue with it is when we search for elements using uh, Selenium, it returns to us the first element that it finds on the page. So a class is not necessarily going to be unique. So that means I could write search field for something else on the page. And if that element was above the element I was looking for, then when I search for it, it's going to return the one above, not this one, because it returns the first one it finds. Now there's all different ways to get around this. We can find all the elements on a page and then kind of go through them. We can search for the specific HTML, like the actual string representation that's right here. Uh, but I'll show you a few different ways. Just keep that in mind. ID class name. When you're looking for an element, try to search by ID. If you can't do it by ID, do it by name, then class. And, and there's some other ways as well. So what I'm going to do right now is since input has a name and it doesn't have an ID, I'm going to steal that name, which is just S. And I'm going to show you how we can search for that name. So in here, I'm going to say search. And this is just a variable that represents what it is I'm going to be storing here. What I found is going to be driver dot find element by name. So notice here, it's showing me all the different ways I can search for things. So by link text, by partial text, by CSS selector, by class name, by link text. Uh, there's a whole bunch, but we're going to use by name. And then here we're going to put S. Now what this will do is simply return to us an object that represents that search bar that we can now actually interact with uh, and mess around with. Now notice at the top of my program, I've included this new import, which is from selenium.webdriver.common.keys import keys. Now I meant to type this out with you, but not a huge deal. I assume you guys can figure that out for yourself. What this is going to do is actually give us access to things like the enter key, the escape key, so that we can type something in this search bar and then hit enter and be able to see all the search results. So what I'm going to do now is actually show you how we can send text to a box like this. So this search box is just an input field. This is going to be very similar when we work with forms in later videos. What we can do is say search dot send underscore keys like that. And then inside here, just put whatever it is that we want to type in the search box. In this case, I want to search for test. That'll be the test or the string we want to search for. So I'll put that in there. And then after we search for test, we want to hit enter so that it actually brings us to the search results for that page. So we'll say search dot send keys and now we're going to say keys which i imported up here dot return now commonly ret uh, enter is referred to as return i think the actual name of the key is return but most people just call it enter uh, but anyways that's the idea so now we found s which is that search box 
we typed in test and now we hit enter so we can run this now and see what happens but first i imported time as well notice that so i'm gonna just sleep so we can actually see what's happening so time.sleep five seconds this just delays the program by five seconds so that it doesn't quit immediately so we can actually see what those search results are so let's run this uh give it a second to boot up here my website is fairly slow so some of this will take a second and there we go search results for test wait our five seconds and we'll notice that it closes there we go all right so that is how that works we accessed um, s we sent the key test we hit enter and then it searched for test so now that we've done that what i want to do is actually bring in the search results into here and be able to access all of those and list out the titles so we'll start by showing you um, a way to actually access the entire html page so once we go to a specific page what i can actually do is print out the page source so i can do something like print in this case driver dot page source <coughs> excuse me now this isn't going to be that useful but i just want to show you what this looks like so you get an idea that we can scrape and access the entire website so we'll wait for that to run here uh give it a second and notice it brings this big blob of text here but this is the entire source code for the page you can see all of it popping up here so that's the idea behind this uh we have the entire source code so if we have that we can access anything from there that we want so let's get rid of that now just want to show you that was a feature and now what I'm going to do is actually go to my website here. I'm going to go to the search bar, type in test and just see where it brings us. Cause I want to start inspecting the page and see how I can actually access all of these different things here. So notice that it has the date, um, you know, HTTP methods this is a little bit messed up. Like some of the spacing is off. Uh, but what I want to actually do is be able to, so for some reason, this is all glitched. Um, I think there's like a title in here. Yeah, there should be where can I, can I get it here? Uh, I think there's like a, a hidden title here that's just showing up in white text. Like that's the reason I can't read it. Cause my cursor keeps hovering over top of it. Um, so I want to print all of those out or at least print out like all of the different search results that are here. Now, of course I can't do all of them because they're not all on this page. I would have to go over to page two to get the rest of them. Uh, but you get the point. I just want to find all of these search results. So to do that, I'm going to hit inspect. I'm going to have a look at how these are formatted so that I can figure out how I want to start looking through the tags to get all of these different things. So I notice that right away, all of the search results are inside of this main tab. So they're inside a main like that. So I'm going to start, start by searching for main. I want to find all the stuff that's inside a main first. And then from there, I can start looking at all these articles, which seem to be uh, the individual results in the search tab and we can see that there is what like a few of them here So let's try that. Uh, let's go ID main. Let's search for that inside of selenium So we're gonna say after uh, Well, we don't need to sleep immediately. We'll just say main equals In this case, I guess it's gonna be driver dot find element by name or not name ID and that's gonna be main and now that we have main let me just show you that I can actually print out all of the text inside of main just by doing that. So we'll print main.text just so we can look at what that is and to ensure that we're going to have enough time to actually hit the next page before we run into main. I'm going to show you a way that we can actually make Selenium wait because what's going to happen right now and I'll show you is uh, once we run this this test, right? So we run test, we hit enter. It takes a few second, seconds before it actually redirects us to the page. So we could potentially run into an issue where we start trying to look for this ID main before we've actually hit the next page because it's just directly after. And that's going to run into an error for us. We're going to have an exception, right? So to fix that, there's actually a way in Selenium that we can wait for a specific thing to exist on the page before we start looking for it. So that is actually where I have the documentation up here. We can see that, I mean, you guys can read it if you want explicit weights. What we can do is say try element.webdriver wait driver 10 dot until EC presence of element located by ID this. So what this is essentially saying is we're going to wait until the presence of this element is located on the page before we decide to move on to the next part of the script. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to copy this in here. We're going to have to copy some of the imports as well. And I'll put that like that. And instead of having element equals all this, we're going to say main. And then instead of this, we're going to say main. 
Now, of course, I need to take some of those imports. So the import was all of three of these. So from selenium.webdriver.common.by, import by, support.ui, import webdriver wait, support, import expected conditions as EC. Okay, so let's import that at the top here. Um, again, you can find this from the Selenium documentation, or you can just type it out. It's nice and big here. You guys should be able to read that. And now that we have that, this should actually work fine. So it's going to load main. I can get rid of this now. And then after it loads main, I can print main.txt like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this script and see what we're getting now. Okay, give it a second. Loading, loading, loading. How slow is my site? Okay, so I don't know if that worked. Okay, so maybe that actually uh, we ran into an issue here. Print main.txt. So I guess main was not defined. Okay, so I figured out what the problem was here. I have this as finally not except. I guess I was just copying blindly without really looking at it. Uh, I don't want to quit unless this actually doesn't work. So what this line is saying, let's just clarify, is web driver wait driver. So that's the name of our web driver. 10 seconds. So that essentially means we're going to wait a maximum of 10 seconds until this thing here. So EC dot presence of element located. So that's saying expected conditions dot presence of element located uh, by ID main. So by ID, we can actually put in here like by name as well. We can do class name. There's all these different things that we have access to um, inside of by, but I'm just going to use ID for now. So by ID main, and then I had finally, which meant no matter what, if this works or not quit, we don't want that. We just want it to quit if this doesn't work. Right. Um, so yeah, so that's what we'll put except there. I mean, and really I should be putting main.txt inside of the try. It's not a huge deal for what we're doing, but we'll make it a little bit better. So let's run that now and see what we get. Give it a second and it just goes ahead and, and quits right away. So let's see if it actually printed anything. It did. So main.txt actually gives me all of this. So search results for tests. We have a date, HTTP methods, dates, you know, all this stuff. Great. All right. So what I'm going to do now is actually make it so that we can find all of the headers of the different search results and print those out. So notice that everything was inside of main, right? So now that I have access to main, if we go back here and I inspect, what I want to do is figure out where I would be able to find the headers of all of these different things so I can print out the search results. Well, it looks as though they're inside of article tags and they're in a div called what is this header entry header and then entry title. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to search for all of the article tags that are inside of this main tag. And then inside of those, I'm going to look for all of the entry titles, which are these, right? And then from there, I'm just going to print those out. So I'll show you how we go ahead and do that. I'm going to say that once we find main and uh, should I put it inside of accept? Actually, yeah, let's do finally. We'll leave that as finally. We'll get rid of quit and we'll do everything inside of here. So we'll say once we have main, let's find all of the elements that are articles. So articles equals main dot find elements elements by if I can find this here. Oops, find underscore elements by tag name. So what I'm doing is finding elements, so plural, by their tag name of article. So this is going to give me a list of all of the article tags, so all of those elements, which now I should be able to loop through and print out the header tags for. So I'm going to say for article in articles like that, and then we'll just say header equals article dot find element by in this case, I think it's actually class name. So find element by class name, the class name. I forget what it was. So we're going to have to go back in here and find that this is entry title. So class entry title, if I can copy that here. So let's do that by class name entry title and then simply print the header dot text. So what this is saying is for every single article in the articles that we found from the main body tag, then what we're going to do is loop through them. We're going to find any class that says entry title inside of that article tag. So it will only give us that one header and then print out that header. So that's what we're trying to do. So let's run this and see if this works. Okay, give it a second. And if we look here, 
we can see that it's printed uh, all of the text, but there's nothing. So there's all these blank lines. So rather than doing the entry title, let's change this to entry summary, which I think was another class. So entry summary. So let's do that instead and see what results we get this time. So the issue is that there was no actual title. So it was printing something. It just wasn't printing the correct titles. So here you can see now we've printed all this research search results. So we have these um, do, 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 dot dot dot. And yeah, that's how we got all of the results. So I think with that, I'm going to leave the video here. I'll zoom out so you guys can read all of the code at once if you want. But the idea behind this is we search something. So we access that search bar, search for an element. Then what we did was we redirected. So we waited using this wait code here until we got to the next page. Then we found all of the elements inside of a specific tag. So inside of main um, that had the article tag, we looped through all of the articles and then we found the title. We we're supposed to find the, the titles, but we found the summary of all of those entries and simply printed them out. So that's what we did. That's what this tutorial covered. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next Selenium tutorial.